Time to address a major issue that I have to admit I don't spend enough time discussing here on Mad Money. I'm talking about the question of stocks versus bonds. Now, there's a good reason why you don't hear me recommending that you invest in bonds very often. And it's not just because this show is about stocks. The fact is, ever since the Great Recession, interest rates have been held down to incredibly low levels. And therefore, bond yields, like the return you get from owning, say, U.S. Treasuries, have been absolutely paltry, both by historical standards and versus what you can get from safe dividend-paying stocks. In general, for the last few years, even when the stock market has been getting absolutely pounded, bonds simply haven't represented very good values versus equities. That's why I've so often castigated you about the idea that excessive prudence can be the most reckless strategy of all. Because if you invest too much of your money in safe, virtually risk-free U.S. Treasury bonds, you've basically been ensuring that you'll get a very low return on your investment for many years to come. All in all, if you want to grow your capital, and after all, that's what investing is supposed to be about, then like I've said before, stocks are still really the only game in town, even after, what can I say, so many years. However, I don't want to make it sound like I'm poo-pooing bonds altogether. There is absolutely a place for bonds in your portfolio. It's an essential place, especially as you get older. Here's the crux of the issue, though. Even though I believe that stocks are the best way for you to grow your capital over the long term, even in moments when U.S. Treasury yields are at historically low levels, at the end of the day, stock investing and bond investing are about two entirely different things. Stocks are the tool you use for capital appreciation, meaning turn your money into more money. But bonds are all about capital preservation. They protect your money and give you a nice and steady, albeit small return, that's still big enough to offset the impact of inflation for the most part. You invest in stocks so that you can risk your wealth uh, you have to generate even greater wealth. Okay, that's what it is. You invest in bonds to protect whatever part of your wealth you simply can't afford to lose. There it is. Which brings me to the generational investing aspect of this question. Depending on how old you are, there's a huge difference in how you should approach the very idea of putting your money into bonds. When you're young, investing is all about taking risks so you can get better returns. I've already explained how people in their 20s and 30s can get away with that attitude because you've got the rest of your working life to make make back any potential losses. But as you get older, you'll have more and more wealth. You simply can't afford to lose it, especially in your retirement accounts. Now, bonds are a staple of saving for retirement because U.S. Treasuries are the closest thing to a risk-free investment out there. But most financial experts will tell you that you need to own a lot more bonds a lot earlier in your lifetime than I think is truly necessary. You'll never get rich from owning Treasuries, though. Even if you invest in 30-year U.S. Treasuries, our government's longest-dated bonds with the highest yields, their low returns simply don't produce much in the way of capital appreciation. Let's say, simply for the sake of this example, that 30-year Treasury bonds, let's say they're yielding 3.5%, relatively low level for historical standards. That is much higher than the 2.5 to 3.25% range we saw in the first nine months of 2015. With that 3.5% yield, as long as you reinvest your coupon payments back into Treasuries, you might double your money in 20 years. Remember, the average historical return for the S&P 500, the benchmark for U.S. stocks, is 10% annually which will let you double your money in a little more than seven years. So if you're under the age of 35 and you own a bunch of bonds with the idea that they'll slowly but steadily make you money, see, I think you're being way too cautious. I know it puts me out there, but you know what? I've been around. That's how I feel. Even in your 401k, your IRA, you want to be very heavily weighted towards stocks while you're young, particularly because these tax-advantaged retirement vehicles allow you to avoid paying capital gains taxes or dividend taxes, allowing your gains to compound tax-free year after year after year. I told you how great compounding is. But as you get older, owning treasuries, especially your retirement fund, becomes absolutely essential. Because unlike the stock market where you can lose enormous amounts of money in the blink of an eye, bonds really are safe. Once you've used the stock market to make yourself financially independent, you do want to funnel more of your money into U.S. treasuries, where you know your investment won't somehow vanish overnight. Ideally, you do that by putting your cash in a cheap bond fund that mirrors the yield you get from long-term treasuries. So let's get down to brass tax. Precisely how much of your retirement portfolio should you keep in bonds versus stocks? Again, that depends on how old you are. I'm going to give you my rule of thumb, though. I don't think your retirement fund should have any bond exposure whatsoever until you turn 30. If you own bonds at the age of 25, you're wasting your youth. It's better to put your capital to work in the stock market where it can actually grow. In your 30s, I'm going to let you keep 10% of your retirement fund in bonds 
or 20% if you're on the conservative side. <coughs> Once you're in your 40s, I think you can go up to 20 to 30% bonds. In your 50s, I say 30 to 40%. And in your 60s, as you approach retirement age, all right, take it up to 40 to 50%. That's right, 40 to 50% bonds. Now, even if you retire, though, you know what? I still think you should keep a substantial chunk of your portfolio in the stock market. Post-retirement, my recommendation is that you increase your bond exposure to 60 to 70%. Because once you stop working, you really can't afford to take too many losses with your investments. Especially since you're going to need to start spending the money in your retirement accounts. <coughs> Excuse me. But that said, I still think keeping roughly a third of your money in stocks makes sense, even for a retiree. That's because you're going to be living off your investments for the rest of your life. So some part of your portfolio should always be trying to create more wealth in case you live longer than you expect and need more money to support yourself. In other words, going all in on bonds once you've retired is a bet against your own longevity. Who the heck wants to take that kind of bet? Here's the bottom line. For younger investors, putting your money in bonds is a fool's game. But as you get older, you should gradually increase your retirement fund's bonds exposure to the point where 40 to 50 percent of your money is in U.S. Treasuries by the time you're in your 60s, because that part of your wealth will then be protected against the volatility of the stock market. But even if you retire, you should keep owning some stocks so that some piece of your capital can continue to appreciate over the long term. Best case, you live a very long time and that extra money, it comes in handy. Let's take some questions. How about Nasir in Pennsylvania? Nasir. Booyah, Jim. How are you? I'm good. A big fan of the show. Thank, Thank you for you. taking my call. Of course. And I love your book, Get Thank Rich you. Carefully. Thank you. I, I'm looking for advice today on how to determine an entry price for a stock, especially if I'm looking to start a core position, given how important cost basis averaging is. All right. I think this is a great question. And the reason why it's a great question is that a lot of people feel like they want to draw a line in the sand. They want to make what I call a statement buy or they just want to be in a position where they kind of got rid of it. They bought it and they put it away. That's why I say take into account human frailty. The most I ever like to buy at one point is half of my position. I prefer to buy a quarter. If the stock goes higher, well, what a terrible high quality problem. If it goes lower, you got room to buy. I like to buy in stages. In all my books, I talk about stage buying because I don't want to be overconfident. Don't you be overconfident. Do it in stages. Brian in New York. Brian. Hey, Jim. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? I have a 401k plan from a previous employer, and I'm trying to decide whether to put it in an annuity account managed by an insurance company or if I should just put it in a traditional IRA. I want you to run it yourself. I mean, you watch the show. I think you can do it yourself. Uh, the annuities have fees. Now, look, I'm not against anything that makes it so that people can build wealth. But my experience has been that a lot of annuities have fees that eat things up. Maybe there's someone that don't. But I believe in self-directed investing when it comes for that. And if you have to, you can put it in your index fund if you don't have time. But I do like to take control of my investments. And IRA lets you do that. Listen, investing in stocks and investing in bonds are two very different things. As you get older, you can gradually add exposure to bonds. But young investors, you just don't belong in bonds. Still much more man money ahead, including the playbook for when a bear market takes a bite of your money. Plus, I'm not kidding around about this. If you want to ensure a strong retirement, you're going to want to listen to my advice and take action tomorrow morning. Don't miss it. And I'm answering the questions you've been sending me on Twitter. So why don't you stay with Kramer? Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.